Hello everyone. Today we are going to see a problem based on thermal stresses. First, let us read the question one time. A steel rod 1 meter long and 30 mm in diameter fits concentrically inside a 1 meter long copper tube having an internal diameter of 35 mm and external diameter of 60 mm. The steel rod fits inside the copper tube. If the rod and tube are rigidly fastened together at each end and the temperature increases by 250 degrees Celsius, what is the magnitude and nature of the induced stresses in the copper and steel respectively? If a compressive load of 50 kN is now placed on the heated compound bar, what is the magnitude and nature of the resultant stresses? And finally, we have to calculate the overall change in length. Young's modulus of steel and copper are given. The coefficient of linear thermal expansion for steel and copper are given. First, let us make a given data. Length is given as 1 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. External diameter of copper is 60 mm and internal diameter of copper is 35 mm. The diameter of steel is 30 mm. The Young's modulus are given in giga newton per meter square. We can convert them into kilo newton per millimeter square. The values of alpha for steel and copper are given in the question. The alpha value of copper is higher than that of steel. Change in temperature delta T is given as 250 degrees Celsius. The load P is 50 kN. Now let us find the area of steel and copper using these formulas. After the calculations we are getting these. In the first figure the rod is rigidly fastened. So when the temperature increases there will be no change in length. Suppose the bar is free to expand. Copper will be expanding more than steel because the alpha value for copper is higher than the alpha value for steel. The change in length in copper is alpha Cu L delta T and the change in length in steel is alpha St L delta T. In reality, it won't happen like this. Both of the materials will take a intermediate position. To come to this intermediate position, copper has to compress by delta L Cu. So in copper, there will be compressive stress. To come to this intermediate position, steel has to expand by delta L St. So in steel, there will be tensile stress. Now let us make an expression alpha Cu L delta T is equal to alpha St L delta T plus delta L St plus delta L Cu. Let us take alpha St L delta T on the other side. It will come as negative. L delta T is common. We can take it outside. We know the formula for the change in length PL upon AE. P upon A is the stress sigma. We can apply that. Using this formula for delta L Cu and delta L St, we can make these expressions. We know that sigma is equal to P upon A. So P is equal to sigma into A. The load P will be same in both of the materials. So we can write sigma st into ast is equal to sigma cu into acu. Then we can take ast on the right side. So it will come in the denominator. We know the values of ast and acu. Let us apply them. Finally we are getting sigma st is equal to 
2.639 sigma cu for sigma st we can apply 2.639 sigma cu sigma cu and l are common we can take them outside and then we can eliminate l then let us apply the young's modulus values alpha values and delta t after the calculation we are getting sigma cu we can convert sigma cu either in newton per millimeter square or mega newton per meter square we know that sigma cu is compressive we know that sigma st is equal to 2.639 sigma cu let us multiply sigma cu with 2.639 so that we will get sigma st which is tensile now in the question we are going to do the second part a compressive load of 50 kN is now placed we have to find the magnitude and nature of the resultant stresses also we have to find the overall change in length you can see that now there is a compressive load here both of the materials will have same change in length delta l p let us keep the stress due to the compressive load p in steel a sigma p st and in copper a sigma p cu we know that the change in length in steel is equal to the change in length in copper let us take est on the right side it will come in the numerator then let us apply the values of est and ecu finally for sigma p st we are getting 2 sigma p cu the compressive load 50 kN will be equal to the summation of loads in steel and copper we know that sigma is equal to p upon a so p is equal to sigma into a so instead of pst we can write like this and instead of pcu we can write like this for sigma pst we can apply this then let us apply the values of areas Finally, for sigma PCU, we are getting this. Since the load is compressive, this stress should be compressive. Let us multiply sigma PCU by 2. When we do that, we are getting sigma PST, which is also compressive. Now, let us find the resultant stress in copper. Previously, the stress in copper was compressive. Here also we have got compressive, so we have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting these. Now let us find the resultant stress in steel. Previously we have got a tensile stress in steel. Now there is compressive stress, so we have to subtract. After subtracting, we are getting these. Now we are going to find the final change in length. This is the final change in length. To find this length, we have to add alpha STL delta T, delta L ST, and then subtract delta L P. For delta L ST and delta L P ST, we can apply these expressions which we have made earlier. Then let us apply the values. Finally, we are getting the change in length which is equal to 3.985 mm. Alternatively, using the formulas, we can find the answers. First, let us find the stress in copper using this formula. Now, let us find the stress in steel using this formula. Then we can find sigma PCU and sigma PST using these formulas. Then we can find the resultant stresses. Now we are going to find the change in length using the formula. The initial change in length is delta L. 
we will get the final change in length by subtracting delta LP from delta L. For delta L, we can apply this formula. For delta L PST, we can apply this expression. After the calculation, we are getting the change in length. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.